Welcome back to Z-Rage 4K and this is Thrones of Decay. So, let's get straight right into it because I don't want to waste your time with this and that. Let's begin. Okay, new information has dropped. I, normally I would just do a, like, watch the video, but they didn't drop a video today, so. I guess we're just going to have to read it. Now, just... So I have like tune out all the background noises, the stuff being moved around and stuff like that. But just let's focus on what's here. Introducing uh, the, this stuff up here is just like refreshing up trip to. I guess it's like like I wouldn't say background. It's, I would say, oh, what, what would you call it? This is like like lore stuff here, and I'm I kind of just want to focus on information. But let, you know what? Let's just start with the lore. We're back this week with our second deep dive in the Thrones. Of of decay, having royal infested ourselves with Nurgle's blessing last time. We are drinking a refreshing trip to the gardens of more. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but you know, you, I just wanted you guys to have the general idea. You can read this yourself. On, I'll put the thing in the description for you guys. Empire's latest legendary lord, Elliston von Drecken. And through it, you may have, and though you may have heard some ramblings rumblings already we're delegated to confirm that thrones of will be released on the 30th of april okay that's a good it's a good timeline they might push it back uh, i'm i'm just gonna let you know right now that's that's a pushback maybe i'm not sure that might be a pushback you never you can never really tell because you know things happen man you know I remember we got that uh, that um, whole vid situation a few years back. We all had a few other problems that came up. You don't know what the world's going to be like. So, 30 is probably where it's going to drop, but let's not assume it's going. we live in a perfect world, okay? Let's assume something might happen. So, don't, don't freak out if it doesn't drop then. You can check out Introduction, Tamika, Lord of Decay, and link below. You can check out my video. I think I'll put it at the end of this video and the end screen. If you, if it's not there, just just tell me in the in the comments. Say, hey man, you forgot to do it. It's like, oh okay, I'm sorry. You know, when I work on it. Right, there's a lot to cover, and we'll you all know why you're here. Here, so let's not waste time, any time, and jump right in. Okay, I agree with me. Introducing Lady of No. Now, I did hear about Esselina Von Draken uh, a few times from various lore channels, but I am so glad that we finally get to see her, because I think they'd... I, I wouldn't know if they did a good job. I haven't seen any pictures of her, but... Uh, this is how I would imagine she would look like. An advisor to Electric Countess... Ilmo von Libist. I can't pronounce that name, so I messed it up. I'm so sorry. Oh. Spellcaster. Zorth Magic. Warhorse is a typical mount. A common dragon. Gunnery School, a unique campaign mechanic focused on developing next stages in Empire Weaponry, Black Power, and Wizardry. Gardens of Moor, a new building type allowing to transport her armies instantly to the Gardens of Moor, constructing within the Empire cities. And it's from a bloodline of, okay. Often been a recluse, yet baneful foe to the enemies of the Empire as an obsessed experimenter and master of magic. It's time to bring her power to the forefront and enhance the Empire's forces in a fair in the face of emerging chaos. Mm -hmm. This is more lore stuff. You guys can read that. Uh, I prefer to, f to focus on magical attacks if it's within her area of effect. Mm -hmm. Plus the living darkness and passive. This increases her own physical resistance. We're completely removing her. Okay. With the dark walker. I don't know, that grants her. Okay, that, that's... Nice little bit of lore. Empire Gunnery School. Okay. The Empire's arsenal needs 
and upgrade fast and long-standing institution of great knowledge and invent invention the Empire Gunnery School has means to make that a reality a resource earned using gunnery units in battle as well as from special post-battle options when defeating enemy power power some Empire Gunnery School upgrades are available from the very start, but invent change invention is nothing without knowledge to back it up. Thus, more advanced upgrades require the Gunnery School itself to advance. Okay, so you're gonna have to bring up the Gunnery School. I'm guessing that requires money or victories or certain type of currency. The Imperial School of Gunnery. I'm calling call any of that now. Uh, can be advanced via f field training, a series of challenges and prerequisites that prove the institutions have what it takes. Once enough progress has been made, the, the amethyst armory can be unlocked. Where, where, here is where further schematics can be spent exclusively. Amethyst units and powerful. Restockable single use abilities. Amethyst. I, I haven't I've rarely read that word in my years of being alive alive. I said alive. Why am I why is my talking different from normally? Uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we got uh let's get here. Gardens are more actually. Yeah, it's a nice little thing, like a little face. Okay, so it's a fast travel system. Interesting. That could be very useful. It could be very useful. When it has no place, for it allows defy certain one's demise. Okay. I'm sort of just reading along here, not really. With Gardens of Moor, it erects new black tower buildings in any visible or friendly friendly or neutral empire settlements. Reaps powerful benefits once constructed. You know, if this army can travel instantly in any selected Gardens of more via fast travel. Yeah, so it's a fast travel system. And it has a cooldown period. That's you want to keep that in mind because if you just fast travel and then like a massive attack happens on your board, well, there's not much you can do about it. These sacred gardens are often constructed of powerful buildings that can push back corruption, allowing recruitment. Okay, and for doing much more. Okay, so it's like a really okay. So we're getting a new legendary hero for them. I think they needed a legendary hero. They don't. They just have like how many legendary? I don't think they have any legendary heroes. So it's just him. Well, there's something with the um, uh, Imperial Huntsman um, DLC campaign that get you that you do um, Empire heroes, but not really. But I think this I think this is their first legit all on their own Empire hero. Like, if you want. Uh, yeah, because if you do that, yeah, because the Empire Huntsman, it's it's basically, um, I won't say you're shackled to, yeah, you're shackled. It's shackled to that campaign, so you can't really use their heroes outside of it. You can only use, yeah, so this guy is basically the first real Empire hero that the Empire has. Um, Huntsman and judicial champion to the Elector Count, Countess of Null. He stands with the Empire not as not just the hand of justice amongst them, but also a mighty foe to political opponents that stands against the ways of the countess famed as savage, skilled fighter with inhuman abilities. Theodore Buckner has felled many powerful opponents and has his sights set on Thimacon. Giant stature with an, an optional demograph mount an extra mobility. Buckner is an ideal right-hand man in any conflict. Uh, 
Judgment is uh, enemy Pokemon and unbreakable. Human behavior strikes swiftly as a Titan has been this active hex effect decreases the movement speed and defense of melee defense of enemies while fearsome combatant passively hits opponent opposition with an intimidating or dropping their leadership okay there's large explosions where it meets the dies with the wearer meets the demise dealing high damage to those in range he goes down swing okay that's a nice ability. I think we needed a combat. Uh, combat heroes, combat legendary heroes, um, uh, I consider them, I wouldn't say less useful, but I would prefer a magical legendary hero because there's a number of... How many combat does there? There's the archer, there's the... There's Call Friends himself, and then there is... There's Belthazar Gelt, the guy with the lower metal. Uh, so I think he'll probably be a good partner with Belthazar Gelt, the Huntsman, too, because he's, like, long range. But um, I don't know, because Call Friends is already good at melee to the degree of, like, yeah, you'd probably be okay with just, like, a regular hero for him. But uh, we, shall shoot. we shall see. I don't want to stumble over my words today. We shall see. Sea shell, that's sea shell, that's sea shell. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's why. That's why it's got... You can't help but stutter over that word when you combine it. Like, yeah, when you... Yeah, it's like it's a tongue twister. You gotta be careful of that. Okay, Master Engineer. The sight of a Master Engineer is a rare one within the Empire. These are quite men with intellect and progress learned to write sculpts. Okay. Inventor trains, machinery... Mm hmm This is all nice lore. Master Engineer. Listen. Brits and Italy, the new generic lore approved. Okay, new generic lord for the Empire. Many approach the battle on foot or mounted atop a war horse or a mechanical steed or even within a steam tank. Oh, that is going to be cool. A steam tank? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't you guys want a steam tank? Uh, wielding a grenade launcher <laughs> and with a sword as a backup. I mean, the grenade launcher. Uh, I mean, that's that's a nice weapon. The sword is back in case somebody gets in close range. That makes sense because Warhammer is Warhammer, and you're gonna be swarmed. So yeah, having a nice sword as backup will be helpful. Master engineer brings some experiment devices to the table as they lead the armors directly. So he might be good partnered up with someone like Theodore Buckner. Buckner. Yeah, and learn from the best. Uh, Master in ballistics, reload time on war machines, whilst also increasing the accuracy thanks to their appraisal. All right, that's a, this is a list of good abilities. These are a list of great abilities. Um, engineer. Follows uh, similar to that of Master. Instead of leading troops from into the other. Okay. So this is a generic hero, I think. Well, the ACAT gathers those of the train that train them. The engineers leave a grenade at home. Favor a two-handed repeater rifle with option of war horse or mechanical steed to mount. With this, they still access to artillery buffs with, okay, okay, okay. So basically he acts as the uh, engineer for the you know what the dwarves do with their engineers, and they they buff um, the various uh, siege engines on their back side of the battlefield. This is what they'll be used for. So they're leaning more heavily into siege in this update, which is good. I, me personally, I kind of wanted I kind of wanted them to to lean into melee. There was some nice melee heroes, but I think that's kind of I don't know. I I feel like. They got so much in the um, in the siege engine and the uh, long range department that I think it's probably better if they just go long range for their stuff going forward because there's no way they're going to catch up to the greenskins. There's no way they're going to catch up to um, the beastmen and the various other enemies of the factions. And I think it's probably better if they just focus on just destroying their opponents at far. At far, that's right.
That sounds very classy. I'm glad I did it. I did it, everyone. Give me a high five. Uh, mechanical shot, magical, actively magical missiles with engines, fire, powerful, flaming, projectile from far target, penetrating, explosive payload, uh, sturdy, study his ways. Okay, so he's probably going to be a good sniper to take out uh, powerful enemies as well as buffing your siege stuff and your other range stuff as well. We shall see. Again, we got to get our hands on it before we make a final decision. No iron sides. Okay, no iron sides. Belong to the arms companies. Rocking heavy plate armor. But okay. Two hundred swords. Two hundred rifles with a swords backup. Okay, upper wash. Big boost to their accuracy, reload speed, shoot from a stationary position. Some of your spar on the sides with non regulation, repeat trailer. As possible, will be issued with master well, handguns. Okay, okay, so the, the, the basically don't go by the trailer. Okay, that makes perfect sense. I mean, to be fair, uh, they probably worked on the trailer and then they worked on the on the DLC units uh, separately. So it kind of makes sense that they were like, ah, uh, there was like a small mistake in the trailer, but that's not a big deal. Like, so long as the get, so long as what they drop in the DLC is good for the game, I don't see too many people have a problem with it. Hutchland, Hutchland long rifles. The Empires double down on their back powder utilities with the British Hutchlands, rifle firearms, crafted the Leon, the Mister himself, his personal rifle, get the full Able to sing out generals and commanders from afar. No one wrong at the end of this. Okay, with a sword and backup. So the sword, okay, uh, like. The entry the missile unitry finds its place amongst the Empire's growing taste for firearms, yeah. Basically, it makes them even more, like, they take them out thing at uh, a sniper. They're basically snipers. They're going to snipe out the Lords just like these guys. So, it's like if you team these two up, you might have a powerful sniping section in your army, which is going to be a... Okay, tank volleys, we'll get to that, but let's take the Knight of Black, the Black Rose. Um... And days of the planet of Black Plague. The oil of the Black Rose was always shrouded in mystery, though its size was shifted unreliably over time. The dark silver armor to reference their name, red gauntlets to signify the split blood. The enemies, the Knights of Black Rose, was kind of a new cavalry unit. So this is the god of death, chosen from those with the highest nobility. Okay. Now the armored. By the top horses as they storm into battle, equipped with a sword and shield, they excel at prolonged combat without need to cycle in and out, helping them lock down the enemies as they fall and cavalry push in from the flank and bind opposition to where they stand, assuming they don't send a flying force. Okay, so it's a new cavalry unit. I think that. All right, uh, it's a bit of a change because I I thought they were doubling down on on the firearms, but honestly, uh, giving them a cavalry unit will be helpful because th they need a little bit more cavalry push. The, the cavalry, the Empire Knights, regular Emperor Knights, are kind of weak. Um, I, I haven't played them in a while, but they're not that they weren't as strong as they were in. Oh, were they ever strong? Uh, I don't want to say it's, I don't want to commit to that statement. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. It's, it is what it is. It'll help it out. We'll just say their, their uh, cavalry game will be helped out by this update. Okay, let's try and saw it on. Steam tank volley guns. I like the designs of the new stuff. I especially like the new tanks here. Uh, I can't wait to get those tanks out. They look pretty good. Look at that. Let's take a look. 
they got nice little decals on it got little flames on it like yeah this this is good they got skulls this is good um it has a very gothic style to it uh thumbs up Use dwarf technology to power its many gears and pistons. Drinks have been able to produce more of them. Remodeled, redesigned, bring the bring bringing with a unique tool of destruction. Take bring the hull mounted cannon launcher as the trunk the valley gun. Very as fought when the weapons were revolving triple barrel cannons change of weaponry sacrifices the longer change of steam tank cannon the higher rate for making ideal for getting into the thick of battle and mowing targets down the spring barrels steam tanks as a whole have also been seen an upgrade with several new attributes Okay, variants. Okay, so there's more variants with it. Sinking out the directional shield, which allows them to block projectiles from all sides, but crucially, the missile block chance is most effective when the tank is. Okay, so in the front, it's strongest. There are also been. So it actually serves like kind of like a tank. I actually really like that. That's a good idea. This, this is a good idea for them. The Empire needed some heavy hitters, and I feel like the Steam Tank will probably be that heavy hitter. They also opened up a hatch of top and a engineer commands his peripheral now the turret. While waving his sword about and shouting at anyone who does, gets too close. Finally, the Steam Tank can fire all its weapon whilst on the move, making it much easier to use it. Okay. So it kind of acts as a tank. That sort of adds to the rumors that they're working on World War II. Um, not two, but a, a World War, um, Total War, that could be coming. I don't want to say soon. I don't want to commit to that statement. But I do hear, we all do hear rumblings from that. I'm not the only one who hears rumblings from that. So that makes it a more likely possibility. That's the direction they're heading in with a, a tank like vehicle like this being added to the game okay the land ship i think a lot of people know about this so it sets the old colossus lampet tower from a battle mobile force or sorts of metal launches like cannon rounds crushes opponents on the foot on the rifles to pick off full power then Amber cranks itself to full speed, sacrifices of trying to abilities for your speed, brings the board at last, getting on bars, wiping out anyone nearby. Okay. Abandoned ship will try to, uh, okay. It's basically self destruct. Okay, legacy updates. Okay, so now we got out the DLC. Let's dig right into the legacy update because I think the legacy update is the one like a lot of people are interested in because it's the free update and uh, it's probably the thing we're all gonna get if you own the game. Because if you own the game, you probably own uh, Total War Warhammer One, so you're probably you're definitely going to get this. While Empire Authority and Emperor's account system for call friends worked quite well in Warhammer 2, the addition of new threats to the Empire, Warhammer 3, and War have left the system as a whole feeling quite punishing. Yeah, it did. I did try to play a, a, I did attempt a playthrough with call friends. It was rough. It was very rough. I had enemies everywhere. I had enemies I didn't know existed coming at me. There are a few UX. UX issues with it. Elector counts mechanics such as it not being clear who the right owner of the region would could would be taking a settlement. Current interactions between fealty and imperial authority often leaves the player increased during 
directly a wall, hoping the Imperial Thor increases their fealty each turn, which doesn't e give much control to the player. Yeah, there's a lot of... It feels like a hindrance nowadays, but, you know. What are we changing? Imperial authority has been reworked and separated from the Imperial Count system. The Imperial Count system is often not appro no. appropriate for our other Empire lords as they aren't Elector Count in lore. We felt like Imperial Authority could be used as a central mechanic for all Empire factions. That is very smart. Um, cause yeah, okay. Uh, I'm I'm kind of on board with that because Balthazar Gelt isn't really uh, emperor, but he does still would need imperial authority. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think he he would still need he would still need authority to do certain things. But, uh, well, well, let's. Let's not speculate right now. Let me not speculate right now because I'm not finished reading the whole thing. All Empire factions now have access to Imperial Authority. However, the feature only becomes active once they own land within the Imperial Im Territory. The Elector Count's mechanic is now exclusively to call friends, but don't worry. Guilt is getting new toys as outlined below. Imperial Authority would previously impact fealty via chance. Fealty now goes up and down via cause and effect. So players will be able to more directly see the effects of their or others' decisions and actions across the Empire. At a base level, Imperial Authority shows how much of the Empire is actually controlled by said Empire. It will divvy out, div, divvy out rewards accordingly whilst giving you a clear view of how well the Empire of Man is doing as a whole. Some tweaks and improvements have been made to the Elector Counts, I was about to say Empire, but the Elector Counts UI to tidy it up a bit, fix up the color bleeding, and have so many Elector Counts visible at all times. Wow, I actually like the color, uh, you know? I... I want to see their um, tweaks before I make any sort of like last statement on the UI, but um, I thought the UI was fine, but uh, I don't know. I'm just one person. Maybe they made some improvements so that everyone can like it. We'll just keep reading. New markers have been added to, to the Empire regions to show who their rifle owner should be when owned by someone else. Okay. That's good to know. Summon the Elector Counts. Functionally has changed. Originally, it replenished all Elector Counts state troops. Now, when the Elector Counts is summoned, every Elector Count that is not currently garrisoned or besieged will be summoned to Karl Franz's location, turning the tide when faced with overwhelming odds. Okay, that should be useful. It depends on the situation. Like, if you're getting uh, overrun by something, you can fight back with the electric counts. With these changes and by allowing every elect empire faction access to imperial authority, reinforcing the idea, the idea that every leader is motivated by the protection of the empire, even if some are preoccupied in other areas uh, at the beginning of a campaign. Okay, let's look at Call Friends. Hosts below the campaign that many players enjoy. Like, literally, most people play Call Friends. Uh, mostly because they want to be the Emperor. Uh, and it's it's a good campaign, actually, because you start out fighting the Rebellion, then you move on to fighting enemies on, on the outside of the Empire, and they're, they go from the Greenskins to, to Vampire Counts to... Uh, all the way up to the chaos itself. It's a very good campaign if it's done correctly and if it's paced properly. Quite tricky at times, particularly. Humber Gate players would often struggle to take 
and fort in a timely manner, resulting in large damage to the rest of the empire wall. They lay siege. This slows down considerably. Yes, it does. If your count nations didn't have much past, it's past the early in the middle game, the world, while well, Richard Johnson already features require you to defend the empire didn't get many tools to help him do that it would even be met with trespasses penalties when trying to rush to the aid of a fellow of his fellow man after a certain point prestige became an unneeded resource without anything of true value to spend it's on okay call from the beginning of the campaign with control okay heart Helmer Helmer gate Guards, I can't pronounce it. I'm so sorry, but at the same time, uh, let's just focus at that you get control of that thing at the beginning, so you don't have to worry about it going forward. That is such a huge thing for Empire players because it eliminates that annoyance right away. We added have added a bunch of new tools to the uh, call friends within his electrical mechanics panel called Emperor's Decrees. Well, I actually kind of like that uh, going off the start of it because he's the emperor. He should be able to give out decrees and demands for subjects. And it should be in the help protection of the entire empire. Each decree is a powerful ability that can benefit either your own or fellow empire factions at the cost of prestige. As an example, you can trigger an inquisition in a province, clear away some of the pesky vampire and Nurgle corruption. Send aid to the emperor that increases their fealty and spawns a temporary armor for them. Or safely declare war against another electric count without suffering fealty losses without, through the Cassius belly. That is pretty good. Because you can take over an area because th there's some points in your empire campaign where uh, a faction was just not agreeing with you and you had to try and make peace with them even though they were just a problem and other times when they would call, uh, declare war on you you suffered penalties to that even though you had nothing to do with it they just declared war with you and even if you won you suffer even more penalties so yeah this is a nice change uh, Bohan of the Sea is a unique mechanic of his own he, yeah he had no Mechanic was on. He was just, yeah, was going. On. And as addition, of, I probably feel like camp over here. He is seeking a new location. Was changed. And was taken a uh, education exchange trip to Granite Cafe, starting just the shy of. So no one within the temple of mental winds, bringing right next door to his good friend Iron Dragon. As he helps the Iron Dragon deal with nomads, he is presented with a series of dilemmas and Peru a way to that pave the way for his time in Cathay or even his return to the Empire. Secured a long, lifelong friendship in the process. The College of Magic is his new campaign feature. Okay, I'll just tell us up next. With this, a mechanic whenever fights a battle with a wizard in his army, he will acquire arcane essays within a number of arcane essays per battle correlating with the number of wizards present. These arcane essays can then be spent on gaining instant access to wizards from every lore of magic, allowing him to acquire spellcasters quickly, quicker and easier than anyone else on the map. Once you've Acquired a new wizard, let's use Grey Wizard for example. More actions are unlocked for the college pertaining to the specific spellcaster. Firstly, arcane essays can be spent on unlocking Dance of Despair Cataclysm spell. So long as the Grey Wizard is within your army during a battle or a unique effect is in this instance mask Concealment can be purchased with a essay to grant stock stance to the army 
can containing the Grey Wizard. So does it have to be Balthazar Gelt specific army, or can it be within any ar any armies within his faction? I think it has to do with any armies in his faction. I probably have to test it. They're saying they're giving me the feeling that yes, it's any army. Like I I did read like it can be granted to an army containing the AK. So it has to contain the Grey Wizard, but it doesn't have to be Balthazar Gelt's army. Oh, okay. All right. I hope I'm reading that right. If, I, if I'm a little bit off, don't be afraid to correct me in the comments. Ambush success chance. Perhaps you wish to heal your entire army in a single go. Well, with recruiting a Jade Wizard, you can do just that. With other lords of magic at the soil, that's the only tip of the and that's only the tip of the iceberg. I'm curious to see what else they're going to be doing. These changes in addition are designed to real light the okay. I saw a few things that are interesting. I'm uh, mostly excited for um, what they're going to do with Carl Franz because they've more or less given him a sense of that he's empowering himself with the various factions within um, within the Empire instead of the factions being like his greatest weakness because all you had to do was cause enough problems for the Empire and Carl Franz would just... He would just be... There would be nothing he could do. Okay, and oh, for next, the details on in action. Keep an eye on the official channels for our second though, gameplay showcase. Well, I should have waited then. <laughs> uh, this is fine though. I think it's a good idea to read it. Uh, next week, we'll be normally dodging our place in the Book of Grudges by talking to the inventor himself. Okay. Uh, we will we can free us bog okay all right so the guy planned out for the month hopefully nothing goes wrong and we get that april 30th launch date uh and if you like this content you want to see more of this content then don't be afraid to hit the subscribe button it's free and you can cancel it anytime and it'll help this channel grow i'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers so any subscriber most appreciated and you can spread it on your favorite form spread it on your favorite form of social media and hitting the like button also helps because it puts it out on the home page youtube analytics love it when you do that so thank you so much for listening really appreciate it and i'll catch you next time